اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بدیع السماوات والارض صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز دی لسنرز السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دی ورس وچ آئی ہیو ریسائٹڈ it translates that allah is the originator of the heavens and the earth today the topic is convincing proofs from the holy quran to the atheism or to atheists agnostics or skeptics that why don't they believe in the supreme god or supreme entity today i will reason things from the holy quran inshallah which will be the eye opener for the people who are trapped into these kind of shak or these kinds of confusions because of this atheism and their atheistic concepts you see allah says in the quran that he is the originator of the heavens and the earth He also says that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now what is the difference? You see if somebody says that he is the creator, he creates something. He is the pioneered creator or he engineered something, devising. He devised something, devises something which is never before. Credit goes to him or her. so he is the creator not the originator why because we study in primary sector that every natural resources from the earth iron copper minerals like calcium salt gold silver all these things are provided all ready you did not have to do anything iron came down from the outer space and which is also mentioned in the quran that we you know sent down this iron and which pick the becomes the part of the core etc it is in the quran surah al hadid chapter 57 verse 29 and allah says then you make things out of it like weapons for your protection so it was sent down you did not create anything so the guy who creates something he is the creator he is not the originator allah says that he is the originator of the heavens and the earth there was one concept one spring reaction you call it big bang and everything came into existence and since then everything is getting separated away from the central point and that is big bang and allah mentioned this in surah al anbiya chapter 21 verse number 30 that these christian sorry these uh, disbelievers why don't they accept allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't they see that everything were was one in the beginning joined together and split asunder kana tarqan fa watakna huma and everything after that allah says originated from water can't they see this why these disbelievers deny these all kind of realities that allah says kana taratan fa watakna huma wa ja'alna min al ma'a kull shay hay and everything created or came from or through water Today the topic is not about scientific things in the Quran it is the convincing things the questions which I'm going to impose on these atheists atheists or atheistic world So Allah says he is the originator of the heavens and the earth now what's the point The point is very vivid All these atheists these scientists who do not believe in god's creation sorry god's existence then you need to show something to create to originate any kind of element atomic stuff atomic number or 
molecule which was not created before can you no you cannot everything you have is in your three dimensional space after the big bang when the time and space started you are manipulating and playing with those atomic numbers that is all to produce a plastic you do some reaction chemical bonding oxygen you have number of these number of that numbers are there and you are just playing with that and you keep researching and expanding but the question is there did you ever make something which was not there before to create things out of non-existence allah says in the quran that we have created you or humans when you were not even existed we created you out of nothing this is the challenge can these atheists create something out of nothing and then you bring things into existence this is the challenge allah says in the quran that try to make a wing of a fly to create in a sense khalq takween where there is no time and space required time and space required in khalq tadbir where things need time three trimesters are needed to make a healthy baby gestation period without that the baby could be uncanny deformed etc but to make his existence of ruh there is no time and space required allah says kun fayakun so allah created every cosmological event with kun fayakun and after that things came into existence with time and space khalq e tadbir the laws the physical laws of nature principles are applied this is allah's wisdom god's wisdom to provide the things into necessities where you have to follow time and space otherwise you cannot acquire things on time so question to atheisms or atheistic people atheists what was before the big bang please provide us the information what is the origin or origination point of human beings i need the origin of human beings not speculative data that we were like you know those apes human like i don't need the word like i need the word as certain do you really know these you know archaeologists or one who studies anthropologist do they really know where we come from no then why we believe why we have to believe you and reject the religious concept why you don't have any greater than us in your reasoning we believe that allah gave these all answers where we come from and where we going to go because this is the question from the dawn of the ages humans enter you know uh, what you call think contemplate in their deepest figments that where i came from and what will happen after that that death allah says you came from up from his ruh barzakh alam e arwah the the life of spirit or soul without these time and space and then we sent you into the world with your human body and when you will die the soul will go back again to god almighty simple concept do you have any concept where you come from no so the point is that questions first question what is before the big bang provide us what was there before time and space do you have any knowledge no allah says before time and space everything was in his knowledge of ruh spirit soul etc no time and space required then origination point of human race where did we come from do you have any answers no question number 3 in dreams we dream without physical usage of our senses how do we see things in dream when the eyes are closed how do we hear when the when the ears are not open tell me how do we taste when the tongue is not out how do we feel when we are not touching anything and how can we see when our eyes are closed 
I want to know the answers. How do you see dreams? That is the part of your conscious level. We call it something related to your ruh. You feel independent in dreams. Then near death experiences of people. Can you just justify how the guy is seeing his own operation is going on in operation theater and he's looking down towards his own body and then the body returns to the when the, and this entity returns to the body and the guy is telling every detail and flabbergasted all those surgeons. I'm asking what is there? What is that point? Then we transfer the whole data from Bluetooth from one device to another without looking at it. But the thing is there. The world of angels, the world of jinn, this Allah's creation, metaphysical creation, how do you deny them? Frequencies of ears, there are some frequencies you cannot understand. There are some things you can't see, X-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet rays, then microwaves, radio waves, can you see these all waves from your naked eyes? No. See, things are there. With our own eyes we can see. But I don't know what is the problem. You are denying Allah. You know there are things in front of you. Right now there are so many beams going on. Rays. But I can't see those rays. These telephone, mobiles. All these rays are there. Telecommunication through satellites. I can't see them. But it doesn't mean that they do not exist. So my point is very simple reasoning. What was there before Big Bang? Tell us. What is the origin, origin of human race? Tell us. How do we see dreams without all the compartments of brain are closed? Tell us. If you do not provide these answers, kindly do not disturb us. Tell us what will happen after the death. Since the creation of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the system into the law of physical nature. If he wants to bypass, he can say kun fayakun. Ibrahim alayhi salam, we are told that Nimrud put him into the fire. The property of fire is to burn things, to, to make a chemical reaction. So instead of burning, Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't feel anything. Why? God bypassed. Kun Fayakun. Moses was crossing this Red Sea. It's supposed to crush. It's not come, but this Red Sea was split on the opposite direction. Gravity is not affecting. Why? Allah made this bypass. Kun Fayakun. So these are miracles which proves show you that Allah is the controller. But normally He made the rules you have to follow. But exceptions are in the hands of Allah alone. Nowadays, people want to go to other planets, exoplanets, or planets like Earth. I said, you cannot, I say, you cannot fix this Earth yet. Want to go to the space. You know, I wonder this Elon, Elon Musk, all the time he is discussing about going to another planet or another life. I said, have you ever solved the poverty of African people? Those little babies are starving in hunger and strife. And struggling and ordealments for long of the years, for, for many years they are been suffering. Have you ever thought of them instead of going to the moon or instead of going to Mars and spending billions of dollars, wasting dollars? Fix this earth first. We have grave problems. Problems of global warming. Problems of all these emissions we are making greenhouse effects. Can't we see that these are the problems we are making and destroying our own earth? You can see how the, the planet is acting, how the animal kingdom is there, endangered species are there, extinct species are there. Then humans, the value of humans is nothing, is worthless now. This social justice we should work. And we have to have one agenda. Islam provides the total complete social political economic system. The problem is the Western people do not like to listen. Those think tanks not, they are not listening what Islam has to offer. Had it been for us, our think tanks or giants of literature, you know, preaching to you, there wouldn't have been any new law or new kind of dynamics needed or state crafting. This is the sad part. We, we are failed and we fail everyone. 
Wallah Azim, we have everything in Quran. We have four guided caliphate blueprints to talk about every aspects of human life to reform. But unfortunately, we did not show our utmost, you know, enthusiasm to promote, proselytize our ideologies. Everyone wants to make a cordial relation. People are dying. You know, the complete uh, havoc or, you know, this uh, clouds of fumes of cognitive dissonance is covering us. But we are not thinking beyond that par excellence that what is really happening. Everything is like what you call mind has developed like intellectual paralysis. The brain, the intellect has paralyzed, is par paralyzed by something, is something not moving us. Hypernormalization. This is all bubble. We are stuck. It's a flume. It's a bubble. It's a bubble of haze, confusion, cognitive dissonance, dichotomy, ambivalence. These things are happening and we are talking about going to moon. Fix the problem of this earth first. So concepts must be clear first. Allah gave us this earth. You cannot go out. You go out. You need the basic things of habitat homeostasis you do not have these kind of biodiversification or ecology to live in you will die you will die you need to have some accout accoutrements or equipments to survive so fix this problem for for many years we are on the earth fix this problem believe in god almighty first you don't believe in allah is his creation you want to play with the nature nature will also uh, you know comes to you will come to you and take the revenge um, that is called mother nature so i hope i make myself very clear if you do not provide this then allah says in the quran that what cost you to believe in him anything cost you believe in him at least you will be salvaged and extricated allah says reason with them in surah bani Isra. allah says that is the creation of the heavens and the earth more complex or the creation of humanity. Of course, heavens and the earth are more complex. See that complexity, see your own anatomical complexity, your physiology, your own body. You see, you cannot help yourself being a Muslim or accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen.